to Allegheny Off-Road. Uh, I'm here today to uh, do the installation video for the voltage regulator relocation kit. Um, in the package uh, that you're going to receive, you get uh, a package of bolts and some zip ties along with an Allen wrench. There are two black zip ties, two one and a quarter, quarter twenty Phillips head uh, bolts. There are two quarter twenty flange nuts. Uh, four quarter twenty hex head cap screws and one allen key in this package. With that, we also have the mounting plate and we also have the harness. Okay, we're going to start with step one, but before we even get to that, the very first thing you must do is you must disconnect your battery completely. Now you can just dis disconnect the positive side if you want. Um, if you feel that it's better, disconnect both ends. But it must be disconnected. You're going to be reaching in and uh, uh, undoing the uh, power and uh, you're going to be touching the frame at the same time with a, uh, a metal uh, ratchet. So with that said, disconnect your battery and then we'll get started. Okay, so just as the safety precaution I described earlier, we've disconnected the positive side of the battery. In this case, it needed a number 13 uh, box end wrench. Uh, make sure when you do this, you do not touch this or this to metal when you're uh, actually undoing the terminal. The reason is that's grounded and you will get a nice nasty shock if you touch those. So. We just want to throw in there that when you do this, do it very carefully and pull it off to make sure that nothing's touching. Thank you. Okay, so we're in the back of the machine. The, this is the voltage regulator right here. I'm sure most of you know this, but uh, we're just going to cover everything from scratch. So this is the stock location. There are two separate uh, conduits. One has the power and ground in it. The other has the three wire yellow uh, piece in it and you're going to need to undo the both of these to be able to uh, remove the regulator so the first step will be to do that okay so when you look in here on this conduit right here here is the power that runs the starter solenoid down below is the black wire and it is hard to see, but it's sitting right on the frame. There's a lot of different things in here that's grounded, but you'll need to undo both of these for power and ground. Okay, right now I have a socket extension on this. This is a number 10 uh, socket. Uh, everything on this is metric. 10 fits both the ground that it's on now and when you pull this boot back, right here is a bolt that's or a nut I should say and that is also number 10. Undo both of these to get half of the harness already disconnected. Okay so to access the three wire uh, automotive connector you open this panel up that everybody has and you set it off to the side and take a flashlight and you can look straight in and see the connector sitting right here. If you see, it's uh, right now the push pin is, is in its proper position. You need to gently pull that out and not break it to be able to disconnect the second part of the wiring harness. The first part we've already done and the power and ground has already been disconnected. Now we just have to do that. The connector is right there. That is the one that you need to use and get access. Right now it's sitting in the motor mount and it actually is uh, secured by a push pin. You have to gently get that out uh, without breaking it because you're going to want to use that later on. But that is how you get to it and disconnect the automotive connector and your voltage regulator is then ready to come out of the machine. Okay, so this is the battery tray right here and these two bolts have nuts on the back. You want to take a box end 
and hold this side while you use the 10 millimeter on the other side to undo it. As we remove both bolts on this side and this side over here, it's uh, worthy of noting all the bolts for both the powering ground and the mounting screws are all 10 millimeter and so all you'll need is a socket extension as well as a 10 millimeter uh, ratchet. So now we've removed the stock regulator out of the stock location. This is what it looks like. Uh, I'm sure you've seen some of the pictures of it already. There's the three yellow wire connector power and ground. Right now you can set this to the side and we can start the next step of running the new wiring harness. To start off with in removing the plastic uh, cover for the driveline tunnel you're going to need two things. A little needle nose set of pliers does a really good job of being able to come in under the push pin, get under that and pull it up. Pulls it out very nicely and you need to reuse these so be careful with it but with the needle nose it works great. The star bits, and you can see they're already out, this is a T30. This is the star bit that you're going to need to be able to get out all of the screws uh, or the bolts I should say uh, out of the uh, center console. Last thing, a T25 when you actually can pop off this cover on the gear shift, it just pops off. This is a T25 to be able to unscrew this and take this plastic piece off and then you can lift up the entire plastic uh, channel. Now we have the cover off as you can see. We pulled off everything and just set it down here for now. The conduit comes back and zip tied and you can run this on either side but we decided to run it on this side. Zip tie, zip tie and, and out. So you can see let me swing around here to the front. We've now got two conduits right here. It's come down through the driveline tunnel and up. These will be zip tied right here. So the idea is just secure it the best way you can. And now you're ready for the mounting plate step. All right, so what we're showing here is the center console is off and this is how we ran the wires. The zip ties that you see here are not included. You can use whatever ones you want to. We decided to run it right next to where all the other conduit was. As long as it's free of the gear shift here, um, it's fine to sit there. Zip tie the conduit down. And now you're ready to go back into the back of the machine and uh, put in the power and ground and also the yellow connector. There is a step that uh, we're going to recommend you do when you plug in the yellow connector and we'll get to that next. Okay, so you can see that the yellow three wire connector has a, a recessed end right there. We suggest before you plug it back in to the uh, existing wiring harness that you put dielectric grease in there. Just one squirt across, don't have to fill it up a lot. Um, there isn't a lot of room for dielectric in there. It might squirt out if you put too much. So just put a little bit in there and shoot that on both sides. So when you go to plug these in, you can. Alright, so here is our harness plugged into the stock wiring harness. This one can be set in here and, and it can just sit and float. Here is the power and ground of our harness back on its original locations of ground down there and power here. With those all connected, you're now ready to go to the front of the machine. So from the driver train tunnel, we've kept the wiring away from the uh, radiator uh, cooled and hot lines. We ran it up through this section right here, straight up to where the mounting plate's going to go. 
We have a loose zip tie. We're going to leave it loose for the time being until we get everything uh, settled and this will be one of the last zip ties we tie down. But this is how we run the connections to the new voltage regulator spot. We've taken a, a quarter inch drill bit and we've drilled these three holes out. And these two holes are for the mounting plate. And they go right here here and here and then the third one is for the connector that plugs in right here okay with the with the vehicle's voltage regulator you now want to orient the plate with the chamfered out area in here so it will sit like this from here you want to screw in these bolts and we're going to go from there uh, around uh, and zip tie it. Um, we'll show you that in a second. We're now showing you how you should set up the mounting uh, plate with the regulator. Basically these two holes you use for the zip tie that we supply. You also use the inside holes over here, not the corner one, although you could use it. It's not for any purpose unless you mount it on the right side of the machine instead of left. Zip tie this down. You can uh, play with it a little bit to get it to sit properly, but you are going to be mounting those two holes on the firewall right here. So for illustration purposes, we screwed these in. These are all uh, the uh, hex head screws, quarter 20s, that you're using to uh, screw it down. But at this point, you're actually ready to mount the plate inside the machine. Uh, but we wanted to show you how you would want to uh, do some wire management uh, and get it ready. Also, here is the push pin that is going to go in hole 3. So it sits like this next to the plate. So we're going to uh, mount it into the uh, machine with the two bolts. And these are the two supplied longer bolts. And then we'll go from there. Okay, so when we mount the plate on these two uh, hole positions you want to put nuts on the back of them the way to access that is to take a star this bit is the T40 and it only takes two bolts to undo and then you push the dash forward and it pops right out with the bolts out this just lifts up and all you do is you push it forward gently and you, and you uh, just leave it like this. Where you want to access is right behind here. This is where the nuts go for the voltage uh, regulator plate. Just be careful that uh, you just don't stretch any of these connections. And certainly you want to uh, leave it just simply sit there uh, gently until you're ready to put it back on. We've now mounted the voltage regulator, the plate, everything has now been put together through the firewall with, with uh, the flange nuts on the back. We've uh, put the dielectric grease in here, put it together and pushed it through the firewall. And now we have both the power and ground done. You've got your 40 amp fuse sitting right here if you ever need to replace it. And now you're completed. The next step is to reconnect the battery and before you do anything else, start the machine and make sure everything is running properly before you have to go tear it apart again uh, because maybe something isn't connected properly. So make sure you test everything before you put everything back together. But at this point the installation is complete and uh, you are now ready to start reassembling. Okay, so we're ready to test. We've reconnected the battery. Again, be really careful when you uh, put that terminal back on, you don't touch the frame. I see brake lights. There's the pump. Now you know that the uh, regulator is doing its job, everything is running. Now you can reassemble the machine. Enjoy having it up there. I think you'll see a lot less failures. And uh, from all of us at Allegheny Off-Road, happy riding.